We'll give it one more minute. Okay, so we'll kick off if, if uh, any Shuluk leaders join after uh, while I'm speaking, then uh, you might miss this brief intro, but uh, I am excited to um, pass the stage to Shazia Nurali. Um, Shazia has uh, has worked with our program before and we had such uh, great feedback and, and insights from that session uh, that um, we wanted to, to do more of these to provide um, great advice around uh, career development uh, for our Shulik leaders. And uh, there's so much that you can do now online uh, in the realm of, of uh, personal branding and whatnot that um, we really need uh, an expert to impart wisdom on, on how you can best um, optimize these, these opportunities online. And so um, we, we have Shazia here. Um, she's going to um, do um, well a, a talk and, and give you a whole host of, of different insights there, and uh, there will be an opportunity for for Q and A as well. Uh, we'll record the session so that Shuluk leaders who who can't attend can can take advantage of it afterwards. Um, so without further ado, I'll, I'll uh, just give you a, a, a brief on uh, on our friend Shazia, um, a senior HR professional based in Calgary who is on a personal mission to change the HR industry challenging the norms around how great culture should be built and infused to make high performing, engaging and authentically diverse workplaces. She's a proud introvert, personal branding nerd, and someone who really believes in the power of social media to, both, to elevate both conversations and results for people and businesses. She is a published writer, speaker and blogger and holds a bachelor of management degree from the University of Lethbridge. And, and, uh, sorry, from uh, the University of Lesbridge, as well as a master's of education degree from the University of British Columbia. And when she's not working, you can find her building her side hustle, The Color Gap, uh, www.colorgap.com, a podcast that provides unique and unconventional career strategy advice for women of color. So I am going to pass the stage to Shazia, who will um, run this, this uh, session with you. And uh, thank you again, Shazia, for, for joining us. We're, we're really excited for this. And um, the, the stage is all yours. Amazing, thank you so much, David. And uh, I'm just really honored to have the opportunity to come back to um, speak to the Schulich Network of Leaders because uh, I have just a real place of passion for working with students and early career professionals and uh, originally connected with David through uh, another Shulik leader that worked with me at, um, at a previous employer. And so it's just an honor to have the opportunity to come back and talk about something that I'm personally super passionate about. As David mentioned in my bio, I'm a total personal branding nerd because I have seen personally what it's been able to do from my own career and my own ability to develop myself. Uh, I'm also a really proud introvert and I really like to emphasize the fact that you can build a personal brand in your own way and utilizing tools online is probably one of the best ways that I've been able to do it without having to constantly be pushing myself out of the comfort zone. None of this is particularly comfortable to do, but it certainly has great rewards as well. So I'm just gonna share um, a PowerPoint deck that I have. Of course, it is not showing up right now, but it will be here in a second. There you go. Okay, so can, David, can you let me know if you can see the screen? Yes, I can, looks great. Okay, perfect. 
So I'll just start off with a really brief introduction into my whole world and who I am. So you all have an idea of uh, me as a professional, as well as some of the things that make up uh, my life on a personal level. So I'm a very, what I always like to call a very simple pleasures human. And that fluffy little dog there is my rescue dog, Ollie, who I am very obsessed with. He's all over my social media feeds and he's someone that um, has changed my life in immeasurable ways in the last uh, almost six years that I've um, been the opportunity to, to have him in my life. And um, I also really love talking about the fact, like I said, that I'm a, a proud introvert because I, I really do believe there's so much power in the quietness that we bring to the world. And there's an opportunity to kind of leverage what that looks like in your own unique way as you navigate through your career. The beautiful little girl who's eating a delightful piece of Cheeto or chip or something in that picture is my goddaughter, Layla, and she's going to be two this summer. And COVID has certainly, um, you know, shifted the ability to really see her in person, but um, we'll soon be reunited once some of the lockdowns get lifted in Alberta and uh, vaccinations move forward. And as David mentioned, I have a side hustle that is really truly a passion project of mine. It's called The Color Gap. Uh, it's a podcast that's really focused around providing what I call unconventional career strategy and advice for women of color. And it's really focused on uh, racialized women and women of color because I think our career paths and ways in which we show up in the world are just a little bit different. And I utilize a lot of my personal experience, uh, my own journey, the mistakes that I've made uh, to kind of infuse that into the conversations on the podcast. And I currently work as a HR business partner here in Calgary for a company called Fortis Alberta. And literally, I think about a year ago and a day, I made the decision to make a really big pivot in my career. So I had spent almost six years uh, working in the banking industry in HR, um, had gotten up to a pretty senior level leadership role uh, and decided I needed to have a change. And I wanted to go back into learning mode and really make myself extremely uncomfortable all day, every day and make a big shift in my, my career. I took a step back, um, pay cut, all of the things that came with that, uh, to be able to go into a role to get some of the foundational learnings in HR that I didn't necessarily have because my pathway to leadership and to um, my HR path has been a little bit unconventional. And so I've been at the last year working in this really heavily unionized environment and sort of learning so much each and every day as I go and sort of putting a little bit into practice some of the things that I talk about when it comes to building uh, a personal brand. And it's been really unique and challenging doing that in this sort of, you know, virtual environment. And I'm really excited to share some of those, those learnings uh, with you. And I will always preface by saying, obviously with us working from home, there are some, you know, noises and things that you might hear in the background. Ollie is, is tucked away in my bedroom. So he's locked away. So you won't necessarily hear him barking, but I do live on the second floor um, of my condo building. And so you might hear some street noise and I apologize for any of that. And one of the things that I love to kind of also say is that um, summary of who I am, you'll find this kind of version of this summary that I really think encompasses my brand and who I am in pretty much anything that you find about me online. So if you look at my Twitter account, my LinkedIn, my Instagram, they're all really focused on these particular things. So talking about the podcast, yeah. um, my therapist recently called me a gentle disruptor. And I absolutely love that. I told her I was going to steal it for myself because I really feel like that describes me in a nutshell in terms of how I want to approach my career. As David mentioned in my bio, I'm really sort of focused around humanizing workplaces and changing workplace cultures. Uh, and that's a really big part of my professional sort of presence and how I approach conversations and the day-to-day -day work that I do. I always talk about being an introvert because like I said, I love sort of demonstrating what we can do and what's possible when you sort of move beyond people's preconceived ideas of what uh, introverts are capable of and always fueled by espresso sometimes twice a day because days like today when it was super early rise, uh, it's necessary. And of course I talk about Ollie and then really just talking about the fact that I, I live in Calgary and that's uh, where I was born and raised. I did have a little stint in Vancouver for a number of years to do grad school, um, but came back here about, about six years ago to start uh, my second sort of life within my HR career. 
And so some points to guide our conversation today, we're gonna to get into the nitty gritty. And I want to just kind of frame the discussion with a couple of different things that will be really important as we navigate through um, the dialogue. One is that, um, I love this quote, I start off any personal branding conversations with this particular quote. And I love it because it's, it's so true to me. I think that success doesn't come by accident. It really does come by design and it comes from thoughtful, intentional effort and moving in a direction that feels really authentic to you, but is also a little bit strategic in how you approach your presence and your ability to be known for the things you wanna be known for. That doesn't happen by accident. It doesn't unfortunately happen just because you work really hard. There's a lot of intentionality that has to go in behind uh, developing your, your personal brand, nurturing it and making sure that it works for you depending on what it is that you are looking for. So we will walk through kind of the differences around if you're looking to utilize a personal brand um, to amplify your job search efforts, or if you're looking for uh, something like that with respect to actually developing your career a little bit further. And we'll talk about the distinctions between those two uh, and what you can do to you know, make some meaningful impact in those directions. But it is true that it, it doesn't happen um, by accident and by, by happenstance. And it's really important, I, I love this term, the humble brag, because I think it's really important to think about positioning yourself and how you want to be perceived through this art of being able to talk about yourself and boast about the things that make you unique, how you're gonna be able to solve problems and what makes you stand out, but it doesn't actually have to feel like it's narcissistic or that it's braggy. It's more of this humble approach, connecting it with your passion, connecting it with your purpose, if you can find a way to master the art of that, it really, really goes a long way to also quiet down maybe any sort of internal dialogue you might have around it feeling a little bit uncomfortable or self-serving. And it's really important to also note that the word shameless can completely be eliminated from the conversation because you are the person that is in charge of your career, of the opportunities that come your way. And you can eliminate the idea that it's shameless or it's selfish in some capacity because it's just a necessary thing that you need to start doing to think about how you position yourself and how you show up uh, in your job search process or as you navigate your career and you're in the driver's seat. So you can kind of eliminate the idea that it has to be shameless or selfish. It is really a form in my perspective of self-care because you're intentionally investing in things in yourself that aren't necessarily about just getting ahead. And we'll walk through what that looks like as well. And it's really important to remember that as harsh as it might sound, no one is going to actually really care about your career as much as you should and as much as you actually really do, right? Because everybody in some capacity has their interests at heart in you know whatever part they play in your career. And there are folks that you're gonna come across that are gonna be incredible mentors, that are gonna be able to provide a lot of insight and perspective. But at the end of the day, you're the one that should care the most about what happens to you in your career. And again, hard work is unfortunately just not enough anymore to get you to where you wanna be. And so really it's about you being in the driver's seat and taking ownership of what that looks like for yourself. And our conversation today is gonna, to, it's gonna cover a number of different things. And I um, kind of wanna walk you through a couple of things around various themes that will probably show up a number of times throughout the discussion. Words like vulnerability, thoughtfulness, consistency, authenticity, those are not buzzwords to me at all. They're actually really key ingredients to how I've personally built my own brand. And it's how I think about personal branding in a way that's really allowed me to do things uh, in a way that's authentic to me, that doesn't feel self-serving, that doesn't feel shameful or shameless. And it doesn't feel like I'm you know, thinking I have this, all of this stuff to offer when it's really about how do I do it in a way that feels like it's really connected to me. And we'll start off by really defining what does a personal brand really mean? Why should you really care as students, as early career professionals? Why does it really matter for you at this point in your career? I will work then into crafting a personal brand that really works for you and your goals. And then we'll kind of talk a little bit about one of the things that I think is super important when it comes to personal branding and that's content creation. How do you start to utilize that in whatever form it looks like to start getting your name out there, start building a reputation, start positioning yourself as 
an expert or someone that's really curious about particular topics that you're interested in diving into. And then of course, we'll talk about relationship building. One of the core tenets and fundamentals of uh, personal branding is, is relationship building, something that never really goes out of style, no matter how much uh, evolution of technology there is and all of those things, it really comes down to the core of relationships. And then we're going to end off with a couple of things with respect to LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is one of those platforms for me personally that has been a huge game changer in every capacity in terms of amplifying my reputation, my thought leadership, and my career overall. And so I want to really do a little bit of a deep dive into LinkedIn for all of you so you can understand a little bit more about what you can do to leverage a platform like that, which is quite perfect for personal branding. And then we'll end off with um, some things to consider as well as a little bit of a Q&A as well. I'm a little bit, um, I, it's, I'm a talker, even though I'm very introverted, I'm not always the most succinct. So I'll be really mindful of the time to make sure that we do have some time to go into any Q&A that comes up. So we'll start by really defining what does personal branding really actually mean? You can Google it and you'll probably find a number of different you know, actual definitions that are articulated. But really in, in my perspective and the things that I've heard over the years that really resonate with me that I think are the most important are two things. So one, it's what do people say about you when you're not in the room? Essentially, what is your reputation? What is it that people know about you? What are they saying about the work that you do, about how you show up, your presence, uh, your perspective, your work, and your output. Uh, and as you navigate through your career, if you are entering into environments like things like the corporate world, you will have experiences where people will, will literally sit in rooms and talk about you to determine the trajectory of your career, whether you're you know, ripe and ready for leadership, what areas that you might need to kind of develop. That's called the talent management process. And it's one of the things that um, is not always really talked about in a really public way. But there's literally opportunities that this happens in a really formalized capacity throughout your career. And it's just really important to remember that these are the things that really define what your brand is. And also, what do people feel when they engage with you, when they interact with you? What is it that they walk away with in terms of their perception and their perspective of you? And whether that's online or offline, those are really important that they stay really consistent because what you see online is hopefully what you're getting in person as well, because um, it's really easy to kind of, you know, show a certain persona and perspective online. And a lot of times when you are looking for job opportunities or trying to build those relationships to really get a strong and, you know, in-depth reputation about yourself, those things need to be really consistent. So how do people feel when they interact with you and engage with you online and offline? And as students and as early career professionals, this is the question I always get is why should you care? What's, what's in it for you? And I have a number of different sort of arguments to, to kind of focus around why it's really, really important. There are so many reasons, so many that I wish I knew when I was all of your ages and in that kind of stage of learning and curiosity and what I call kind of rookie mode because it would have been so important to propel things forward for me in a really, really different way. And I think the first thing is that at the end of the day, your resume just isn't enough anymore. And I'll give you some context into where something like that comes from. It's not just a broad statement that's you know, come from, from nowhere. I've spent a number of years in my HR career in the recruitment to tell acquisition space. The last organization I worked for were a really popular brand here in Alberta. And on average, we would receive about 40,000 resumes a year um, for every you know, job overall from all the jobs that we would be um, looking at. And it was just overwhelming in terms of the interest, in terms of the number of applications that we would see, the people that just wanted to get a foot in the door. And those that had more opportunities that stood out that you know, had the chance to really position themselves differently looked beyond the resume. And we'll walk through what that kind of can look like for yourself as well, some food for thought. But truly when you're up against so many applications and people that are vying for the same opportunities, what are ways in which you can distinguish yourself as a human being, as a professional, as an expert in your field? Even if you're just starting out, there are a lot of different ways in which you can stand out uh, to push yourself uh, forward and utilize that 
so that you actually get noticed for opportunities instead of getting lost in the shuffle of the hundreds, potentially thousands of applications uh, that, that you know, get put forward for single roles. And you also think it's important that you want to think about future-proofing your career. So, you know, there's always conversation around things like the gig economy. We've seen the, the effects of, of COVID and what it's done to the economy as well with respect to jobs and, you know, long-term employees being laid off from employers that really don't have much of a choice in terms of, you know, what they can do to kind of maintain their current workforce. And if you're going to start building your brand and start thinking about these things after you've been laid off or you're just starting to look for an opportunity, you, that's, you know, you're definitely starting from a place of almost lack. And there's an opportunity for you to be intentional about doing the investment, planting those seeds now when you're students and you're just starting out in your careers as well, because you just don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. Maybe some people predicted COVID, but most people probably didn't. Uh, we didn't really know that this was coming in the way, in the force that was coming in. And I think it's just a reminder that there's more that you have to do than just trusting that security and job security are available to you. And by investing in your brand and really being intentional about what it is that you want people to know about you and who you are, you really have the opportunity to future-proof yourself uh, so that you have opportunities that show up that you may not have even thought about. And I think it's really important too that, like I said, it doesn't always have to feel self-serving. If you're a person, and I'm assuming all of you are considering that you're here and that you are, you know, Schulich scholars, you're fueled by lifelong learning naturally, right? You're all really curious people. That's probably how you navigate through many different parts of your life. And the beauty of investing in your branding is you have so much opportunity to learn and to develop and grow your own skill set and your knowledge. A big part of where that comes from, for me personally, I've seen it through the relationship building element, being able to connect with people that you wouldn't normally necessarily connect with because you have a sense of curiosity about their own career and how they navigated through where they ended up. It's amazing what it can do to only not only like fuel your sense of curiosity and your ability to learn, um, but it also opens up the opportunity for roles and you know future roles that you may not have even thought were possible for yourself. The role that I'm in now with Portis Alberta, one of the reasons I took it was because I had a couple of relationships in the HR team from people that I met through the networking world, through the HR community here in Calgary. My boss now is someone that I met through an HR networking event a number of years ago, and we just cultivated a relationship over the last number of years, just trying to understand each other's worlds. He used to work for the city of Calgary. He's also a professor at a local college here in Calgary. And so there was always this opportunity to kind of learn from him. And that in itself turned into when I was looking for a new opportunity, I reached out to him and very quickly uh, we moved through the recruitment process. And I think it took maybe less than two weeks for uh, a job offer to come. And it was really fueled by that relationship and the curiosity that led to that, uh, that relationship moving forward. And I think it's also important, and I don't know if a lot of people really talk about this when it comes to personal branding, but I really feel like there is an opportunity to kind of hone in on your presence and how you wanna show up at work through your personal brand. And there's an opportunity for you to think about how do you wanna be known? What do you want to be known for? And how do you make sure that you be able to bring who you are, your whole self to work? It's not always an easy thing to do. For me, it's still a little bit of a lifelong journey. I think it always will be because it is about navigating through different environments where you don't know if you can talk about the things that you know, really light you up outside of work and who you are, what makes up who you are as a whole person. But actually investing in some of this energy into your brand allows you to become more confident to bring some of that forward. Because at the end of the day, we're all humans having a human experience together. And truly, nobody wants you to not have, get to be your authentic self at work. And it allows you to really test the waters in certain contexts and environments. We'll walk through what that looks like as well in a moment. And I love this quote. So Kristen Dick is a personal branding coach here in Calgary. And she's someone that I met through a previous employer that um, I had her come speak to one of my teams when I was uh, in leadership. And this is the one quote that stood out to me more than anything else she said, because it just really resonated. 
she tells a story about having a performance review with her boss when she was working in a communications role in the nonprofit world. And her boss sat her down and said, look, like Kristen, you do really great work, but no one actually knows who you are. And that was something that really resonated with her and actually propelled her to move uh, her career in a different direction. And she's now investing in actually, you know, obviously working in a personal branding capacity. And it was such an important statement because it really sums up why it is so important to invest. It's not about your GPA. It's not about how hard you work. When you're getting into these environments in the corporate world or elsewhere into different elements of whatever your work life is going to look like, if people don't know you and they don't know the work that you're doing, they're not going to advocate for you. They're not going to be the first ones that put up their hand to say, so-and-so would be amazing at this opportunity. Let's make sure to give them a consideration because you might be quietly working away and assuming that your hard work is getting noticed. And it will to a certain extent, but there is this element of investing in branding so it can amplify those things for yourself. And how do you start to really craft that personal brand that actually really works for you? Your approach is really going to depend on a couple of different things. So what it is that you're really seeking and what it is that you actually really want to be known for. So if you are someone that is starting out in your job search, what that's gonna look like in the immediate term is gonna be a little bit different than someone who is already deep into their career or starting out into their career and looking to start to make some impressions and build some relationships. So we'll walk through what that, what that means. So first you really wanna get clear on your why. So why are you doing it? So is it because you are trying to build relationships so that you can you know, get noticed for opportunities? Is it that you um, are looking at starting to build more capacity within the role that you're currently in and starting to develop yourself further in the career? What is it that, that you're doing it for? Is there some approach that uh, you, know, you wanna take that is really, really consistent with what it is that you wanna get out of the experience. So being really clear on what your why is and what your purpose is, is going to really help make sure that you're staying consistent and accountable with your efforts so that you're not all over the place and you're not putting yourself in a position where you're overwhelming yourself with the different efforts that you need to take. And then it's really important to define for yourself, what is it that you wanna be known for? Do you wanna be known as someone who's really passionate, someone who's an expert, someone who, just gets things done, someone who's a leader. Those are the things that you really wanna define for yourself as you're kind of starting to build a little bit of that foundation for what's to come. When you define a little bit more about what that is, it becomes a little bit easier for you to sort of speak to that in a really consistent way, whether it's through your online platforms or it's through face-to-face -face relationships. And when you're reaching out to someone, say for a coffee chat, you have a little bit of a direction in which it is that you want to want to go in and you want to be able to leave that impression with that person and by defining things for yourself around what it is that you want and where you're going it just allows for the conversation to go in a direction that allows that other person to support you and help you through that journey to get there as well so by being really clear about those things it helps you to just amplify all of your efforts and it really allows you to start to hone in on where you want to invest your efforts. So whether that's going to be through an online process, through developing your social media platforms, creating original content, or maybe it's just through relationships, or it's through looking at ways in which you can enhance what you've got going on with respect to your schooling and all of the things you're doing in academic world. There's a ways in which you have to really hone in on where you want to invest. And again, it will really depend on where it is that you're starting off in terms of developing your career or really just looking for an opportunity. So we'll walk through that next. So really the differences here are around that personal branding for your job search versus your career development. These are two kind of distinct things in my eyes, um, but there's a lot of uh, things that are very common in both. So what are all the ways that you can differentiate yourself as a candidate? So I always tell students whenever um, I talk to any students, I always say, you really have to think beyond your GPA. Your GPA is going to be really important in an academic context to be able to get you into you know, particular programs, whatever it is that you're looking to advance and study in. But beyond that, employers aren't necessarily going to be seeking that in every single context. 
And regardless, trying to be a more well-rounded person in terms of the activities, the things that you're involved with, it just makes you richer as a person in terms of your knowledge and your relationships. And so looking at from a recruiter's perspective, if you think beyond your GPA, when you think about volunteer engagements, mentorship programs you might be involved with, anything that allows you to position yourself as a person that really thinks beyond just the academic world will really round out the things that you are able to offer to a potential employer when you are looking at ways to stand out as you're looking through your job search. I'm looking at a resume of a student that has really, really focused their energy and their time on their academic pursuits throughout their four years and beyond compared to someone who, while they were in school, they were also potentially working part-time, volunteering, doing sports activities and other things to kind of hone in on their passions and the things that they were really interested in. I'm gonna to lean towards the individual that has done a little bit more than what's expected because to me, that demonstrates leadership. That demonstrates someone who's resourceful. And I will tell you from a perspective of a former recruiter and a former people leader, Resourcefulness is probably one of the most important things that I ever have looked for because at the end of the day, we want to hire people who have the capability to navigate through ambiguity and work through situations where there's not always a clear roadmap of what success looks like. And the higher up you get in your career, the more it will depend on the way in which you think and how you solve problems. And I also recommend as well, when you're thinking about your job search, really start to consider investing time and energy into what I call unconventional applications. So I'll give you some examples. So when I was uh, at ATB, one of the, the last couple of roles that I held at ATB was in the recruitment team. And I had the pleasure of leading the recruitment team for a couple of years while I was there before I moved on to a different opportunity. And we had this program called ATB 101, and it was a summer student program that became really, really popular across uh, actually all, all of Canada. We would get thousands and thousands of applications every year. And one of the ways we started to think about distinguishing you know, the time and energy we were putting into looking through hundreds of resumes that really looked very similar, we started to ask students to think about different ways in which they could position themselves to tell their story to us in their own way. So we got applications, submissions that had everything you could imagine under the sun. We had individuals doing uh, original videos that just showcased who they were, telling us their story. We had people submit podcast episodes that they did about themselves. I personally, when I was uh, at ATP Financial, I was interested in joining our uh, women's network and uh, applying for that. I wanted to do something that really stood out and that allowed me to tell my story in a way that showcased all of who I was, including being first generation Canadian, being Pakistani, a child of immigrants, all of these things are really important to me in my story and my why for why I wanted to work on the Women's Network. And so I actually created an Instagram account and a feed that was really all around why I should be hired into that role. And it worked and it was a great conversation starter in the interview process and just something to plant seeds around what is possible. So thinking about considering trying something a little bit different, it may not always work. I can say right now, my resume is a mix of conventional and unconventional in the sense that I talk about who I am as a whole person. I talk about the things that drive me, who I am outside of work. I include testimonials from previous leaders and people that have worked for me on my resume, because I think that it's really important to try to fill in the gaps for people that are looking at your applications in a way that will allow them to see fully who you are. So thinking about that, I think it's just really important to start moving past the idea that it has to just look like a traditional two-page resume. And then there's ideas like content creation that I wanna dig a little bit deeper into because these are the things that are really common when you're looking at dis differentiating yourself as a candidate versus someone that's navigating through your career. Content creation for me has been the biggest game changer in terms of positioning my reputation and my own personal brand uh, as I navigated through all of the different stages of my career. When I was living in Vancouver, I was recruiting for a construction company out there. And I just started to notice that job seekers would you know, struggle with the same things with respect to their application processes and you know, their interviewing and all of those things that, 
that people navigate through because the job searching experience is not typically designed in a way that brings out the human elements of the process. And so I started a blog and it was all about helping people navigate through the job search process. And since then I've translated that into LinkedIn and just started building a little bit of thought leadership and a bit of a following around the things that I want to do to position myself in my future career uh, through content creation. So we'll dive into a little bit with what that looks like in a moment and relationships. So when you are looking for opportunities, there is no better way than relationships to kind of get you noticed and get those opportunities. Referrals go a very, very long way. It's how I landed my first HR job. I was working as a temp at a helicopter company out in Vancouver, and I was uh, doing a role that required me to help the investor relations group with just putting together PowerPoint presentations. This was while I was a grad student. And I ended up leaving that opportunity to go pursue something else because I needed a full-time role. And after about a year, I realized I was kind of selling my soul a little bit in that role. And I really wanted to go and get myself an opportunity in HR. That's the reason I moved to Vancouver. It's why I went back to school. And the relationship that I had built with the VP in that helicopter company that I was working for was what got me an opportunity uh, to start in recruitment. And it was a four month recruitment coordinator job. I was literally like shredding paper my first couple of days in, in the role. And I would have to create scripts for myself to be able to just have conversations with strangers because I was so uncomfortable and just totally out of my comfort zone. But it worked and I was able to propel myself forward from there and it all started with a relationship that I had and that I cultivated and nurtured outside of that employment uh, dynamic as well. And then when you think about how you can propel your career forward through personal branding, I go back to Kristen's quote around doing great work and nobody knowing who you are and how you combat that is recognizing first that you're more than your job titles. You can have a job title uh, like myself, like an HR business partner. But the ways in which I've been able to build a little bit of a different brand and name for myself internally within my new organization is the second point. I've been seeking ways to solve problems outside of what was traditionally on my job description. So you think about ways in which you can seek to understand where are their roles, experiences, and gaps in the things that you're seeing that you can start to find ways to solve. So we have a summer program that we started this year where we're hiring students, a cohort of about 15 of them, and they're all doing it virtually. And for experienced professionals like myself, onboarding into a new organization has been incredibly difficult. And as a student, you don't necessarily have all of those experiences to lean on that someone like I have. So I have pitched an idea to my boss to actually just create a little bit of a experience for the summer students this year. And we got executive approval, got the opportunity to put something together and it's solving a problem that didn't necessarily you know, sit in my job description and what my job title actually was. It goes above and beyond that. And that's a great way to get yourself recognized and noticed and build relationships in a different way. And again, content creation and relationships. And we'll walk through what that looks like in the context of um, propelling your career forward through, through branding. So let's dig deeper into this idea of content creation for personal branding. And I have a few things that I always like to, to kind of hone in the conversation on with respect to what's really, really important. So I'll actually start with the authenticity factor. So I always say that if it doesn't feel natural to you in terms of the things that you're talking about and your experiences, you probably aren't gonna you know, come across in a way that, that comes across as authentic in what you're creating. And when I talk about content creation, I'm talking about a whole number of different avenues that you can consider. So it could be as, as easy as a short form post on LinkedIn. It could be an actual long-term published post on LinkedIn that is attached to your actual profile. It could be like me where you start a blog that you know, is hosted on a free platform like WordPress. I think that's still accessible and available for people. Uh, and it could be different things like creating videos and maybe a YouTube channel. Whatever it is that you're really, really passionate about in terms of the things that you're learning or what it is that you wanna be known for, you can channel that into creating content that's really authentically you. For me, I utilize a number of different things to kind of showcase this. I actually did a post last night about my one year anniversary at Fortis Alberta and how incredibly difficult it has been to go back into sort of this learning mode as an experienced professional. 
and having walked away from a pretty senior leadership role in my last organization, taking a pay cut, all of the things that I did because they were in service to something bigger in terms of long-term goals for myself. I use this idea of vulnerability coupled with authenticity, and it does amazing things for relationships and connecting with people. Because what it does is it suddenly opens up this opportunity to chat with folks that you never would have really connected with because they see something in your perspective, in your knowledge, in your the things that you're sharing that they either wanna learn more about or that they can relate to. And the consistency factor is incredibly important. So it's not a one and done thing. So you can't just go and create a LinkedIn profile and then never do anything with it or do one post and then never nurture it or do anything to ensure that you're actually doing things to build on that. So it has to be about consistency. Some people like to talk about doing things like content calendars and actually having a plan for the different things that you're gonna be sharing. I'm a little bit more sporadic. I just go and post and create content whenever I feel really passionate about it. Obviously I have my podcast where I have a, a release schedule for every two weeks. And so I have to stay consistent in terms of how I'm doing things there. But the fact is, is that it doesn't necessarily have to be on a schedule for everything else that you might be doing, but just that you're consistently building a presence online and you're accessible and you're showcasing all of that in a way that feels authentic to you. And the term vulnerability might feel a little bit scary in the idea of talking about yourself and building a brand for yourself online. But I think it's kind of something that is coming more and more to the forefront of our reality. I think with COVID and everything that the whole world has gone through, and the tragedy and the sort of you know redirection of priorities in life in the last year plus, there's been a real surgence of humanizing our experiences and talking about them uh, in a way that connects the dots on who we are as human beings. So I always say, don't be afraid to kind of infuse the things that you're navigating through uh, as you're being a student. It doesn't have to necessarily be connected to the things that you're learning or what you're an expert on, but it could be about your own personal development. If you've navigated through imposter syndrome or you're struggling to really know what life looks like beyond school, talk about those things. I don't think that there's any sort of rules around what works and what doesn't work in those platforms, as long as you're just using common sense and you're putting up things that you feel like you could look back on in a couple of years and be really proud of as well. And then relationship building. And this is super important during and after COVID, obviously it looks a little different right now, um, but the fundamentals and the, the core sort of elements of great relationship building don't really change if you're doing them virtually or if you're doing them in person. And there's some things that I have seen that folks have done really well in the time that I've been, you know, reached out to and connected with and things that people have done really poorly. And so I always take lessons from those. So I think about the sort of thoughtfulness and intentionality factors of relationship building. So if you're reaching out to someone, for instance, maybe you were on this conversation and you wanna reach out to me after to dig a little deeper on something I may have said. I always love when someone's really thoughtful in their approach. If you're connecting with me on LinkedIn, I always recommend make sure that you do a personalized invitation that it's not just uh, you know, a click and send an invite without really thinking through what's in it for that other person. So thinking about that reciprocity factor. So it's not just about you taking you know, things from that person or downloading their knowledge to you, but how are you going to be able to add value to their lives as well? And so thinking about how you position your request or your ask. Uh, intentionality is super important. So especially on a platform like LinkedIn, you don't wanna just add anyone and everyone and just flood your, your feed with strangers that you don't have any connection with. Be really intentional about making sure you are finding people that have some connection to the things that you wanna do in terms of your long-term goals or that you might even be really inspired by. And that reciprocity factor comes in when you can think about how you can add value to their lives as well. And it might just be coming to the conversation, being really prepared, and having thoughtful questions. That's something that stands out significantly. And I think going back to that thoughtfulness factor as well, if you've reached out to somebody, maybe they're a complete stranger on LinkedIn or through on some sort of social media platform, or you have some connection that someone has recommended you reach out to, if they spent time and energy talking with you and out of your their day to engage and connect, be really thoughtful about your follow-up. 
So I remember years ago, I had a friend who was interested in opportunities uh, when she was first starting out in her career. And I had interviewed for a role at an oil and gas company here in Calgary. And one of the folks that I interviewed with happened to be someone I went to high school with. So there was a bit of a relationship there already. But when I had uh, finished the conversation and we were going through the recruitment process, I was already in conversation and the recruitment process for another organization. I ended up taking the role with that other company. And what I did was actually sent thank you notes to both of the folks that interviewed me. Uh, through the conversation, discovered that they both loved Starbucks and coffee. And so I included, I think they were like $10 gift cards in the thank you note, and mailed it out to them. And it ended up working out super well in the sense that they reached out to say, thank you. Do you know anyone that actually would be interested in the opportunity because we we're looking to fill it? I was able to recommend my friend. She got the opportunity to take on the role and has since propelled that experience into becoming a manager at a major consulting firm based here in Calgary. And so it's this reciprocal effects that can happen. It has a domino impact. And it's just about being really thoughtful in your approach uh, and when you're looking at building those relationships and asking people uh, to connect and engage with you. And then a little bit of a deep dive on LinkedIn. It is one of my, uh, I'm a very big fan girl of the platform. Like I've said, it's really changed the game for me in terms of what's really, really possible uh, for myself. Because like I said, I'm a really naturally introverted person. I'm not the person that's you know effortlessly navigating through networking events, whether they're virtual or in person, I find them to be really difficult um, unless it's really specifically focused on a particular topic or there's something that's a shared interest element in terms of the conversation that's happening. If there's a speaker, things like that, makes it a little bit easier. And I find LinkedIn has not only helped me build a lot of confidence in my own voice, uh, helped me hone in on how I want to come across and what it is that I want to say, uh, and how I want people to know me and to understand who I am. But it's done amazing things for me in terms of being able to build a relationship or a reputation for myself without ever having to sometimes meet people face to face. So I remember when I was working at my last organization, there was a VP that was moved into one of the areas that I was supporting and I had never met him and was walking by him and our head of HR at, at one point heading to my car and the head of HR stopped me to introduce me to this individual. And he said, actually, Shazia, I know exactly who you are. I see all of your posts online. I, you know, always impressed by the things that you share. And it was this moment of saying like, wow, it's actually really working in a way that I never really realized. And for me, the way that I would connect the dots was always connecting it to the employer that I was working for and the things that we were doing. And I've since then kind of transitioned that to talk about the things that I'm doing with the podcast uh, very different interests that I have in diversity and inclusion. And I also talk about my own personal experiences navigating through the job change and the pivot. All of that shows up in my LinkedIn feed because I think it's just super important to start infusing the personal into the professional and let people see you for something different. And a big part of the reason why I do that is because for a very, very long time, I was known as the recruitment person, the person who was the guru around recruitment that loved recruitment, knew everything about it. And I took this very intentional shift in my uh, career into an HR business partner role because that was a big part of changing people's perception of what I was capable of and who I could be in terms of where my expertise could lie. And so LinkedIn has also just been a really amazing platform for building those reciprocal relationships, connecting with people that I would never have had the opportunity to connect with otherwise and just building the opportunity to learn from people because there's amazing content that's shared on there on a very regular basis. So just a couple of tips for what you wanna do when you think about how you show up with your LinkedIn platform. I always say it's really important to use conversational and personal tone and first person bios because if I'm meeting you for the first time face-to-face, -face, you're not gonna to talk to me in third person and you're not going to use a whole bunch of jargon or things that aren't necessarily natural in terms of the language and the conversation. So it's really important to think about that and challenge yourself to really push beyond maybe any perceptions that you have around LinkedIn being a platform that can only be used to, you know, really talk in a very corporate kind of professional capacity. There's a lot of room for that humanized lens. And creating original content, like I said, this goes a really, really long way, coupled with this thoughtfulness and vulnerability 
are really important. I've talked about my mental health. I've talked about therapy. I talk about all of the things that I'm navigating through as a human being navigating through COVID on LinkedIn. And it has just opened up multiple doors for conversations and connections with people for building my speaking engagements and opportunities to do workshops like this. It's all through that intentional investment in creating even short form content that's really about my expertise, but also about the things that I'm navigating through in my personal life. So I always recommend thinking about LinkedIn as a platform where you can really bring your authentic self uh, to the platform in a way that feels really, really good for you and helps you propel what comes next. And some things to just note as we kind of move to the end of the discussion um, around what, what you wanna do overall with this whole branding journey. I know this was really high level and I'm always happy to answer questions as well around digging in a little bit further. And of course, we'll leave some room here at the end for that. It'll just be another minute or so before we get to Q&A. So I always say it's a really slow burn. So you can't expect overnight for results and for impact. And you just have to be consistent in ensuring that you're sharing and you're present and you're nurturing your brand online and in person or relationships wise too. It may not always get the response that you want when you reach out to people for informational interviews or coffee conversations or connections. But the more that you try, the easier it becomes and the more thoughtful you are in your approach to asking people, the more you'll get a response. I think it's also really important to be really agile in your approach. Uh, within the last year, I started creating original videos for LinkedIn and for my Instagram feeds for the podcast to be able to showcase you know, the things that are going through my head and why I think it's connected in some way to what it is that I'm sharing. And I will tell you, it is incredibly uncomfortable. I often find myself reshooting video clips of myself like 20 times over and over and over again, but I push myself to do it because I think you do need to be agile and pivot where it makes sense to be able to add different types of value uh, to the platforms that you're working through. And I think I mentioned this before that it's not a one and done scenario. So you really have to be intentional about nurturing your online presence, nurturing your brand so that when you're navigating through new environments, you have to be intentional about making sure people know you for the right reasons, that it's not just because you got the job, that you got a foot in the door, that you can just sit back and rely on your hard work, or you're posting one thing and then never looking at your LinkedIn profile again, or ever going back on to nurture you know, relationships and engagement and all of those things. It's a continuous process. And I always recommend even just setting aside a little bit of time on a weekly basis to ensure that you are making sure you are also updating and advancing the things that you uh, wanna share with your network so that it's not just stagnant and dependent on where you are at the time that you created those things. And it's really important to know that if it's uncomfortable at first or even always, that's okay. That's the only way that you grow and transformation and sort of evolving some of those things for yourself doesn't happen overnight. And it also doesn't happen by going from A to Z to be able to sustain change and to develop some of these new skills that you might be trying to develop for yourself. It's like building muscle. It requires time and consistency and effort, and it's going to be uncomfortable. And sometimes it always will be because you are in a sense, putting yourself out there, whether it's through the desire to build relationships or to be known for the things that you're sharing and your expertise or your insights through your vulnerability, that may always be uncomfortable, but that's the only place that you really grow is outside of that, that comfort zone. So I've done a whole lot of talking and I know we've got about seven minutes left and um, I'm pretty okay with silence. So I will sit here for a couple minutes if nobody has any questions, but um, I also will note uh, my contact information is on the next slide. If you do wanna connect with me at any point, I'm very easily found. I'm the only Shazia Nirali uh, that I know of. I don't think there's anyone else in the world with my name. So I'm really easily Googleable. Uh, as long as you remember the second H, you'll be easy to find me. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn and Twitter. I also have an Instagram account. Uh, and the Color Gap is available as well on, uh, on Apple and Google Play and Spotify. And I release new episodes uh, every couple of weeks. And I always say it's not you know, only for women of color and racialized women uh, in terms of the advice and the plot, the content that I share on that platform, but it's primarily targeted uh, in that direction because I think that 
we, we definitely deserve to have spaces that are really curated for us in terms of our unique experiences as well. But I encourage anyone to, to kind of get on there and uh, listen. They're usually short and sweet episodes, occasional longer ones as well that um, are usually interviews. So any questions? I'm just gonna pull up to see. Thank you so much for that lovely comment. And yeah, if you wanna connect with me on LinkedIn, I would absolutely encourage that. Uh, I love to be able to uh, engage further. I know this was a really high level, a lot of information to kind of digest at the exact same time. So uh, if there's anything you wanna dig deeper on and you're not comfortable asking in front of the larger group, uh, feel free to engage with me as well offline. Uh, and we can certainly do that. But uh, Tushita, did I say your name correctly? Yeah, that's right. Um, hi. Um, hi. I actually attended your very first presentation with the Shirek leaders. It was many years ago and I feel kind of old, but um, it was <laughs> awesome. And I, I have been following you since then. Um, I do listen to, and not, not regularly, but I do listen to the color gap. I particularly like the one where you talked about kindness and niceness. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a few weeks ago and it was um, quite insightful. Um, I, from your presentation today, uh, my question is, um, you talked a little bit about like co creating content that you would feel proud of in the future years. And I feel like that is probably one of my biggest blockers or fears when I think about creating content because I don't want it to sound, I don't want it to be cringy, like, you know, two years from now. And I wanted yeah. to kind of learn about what your approach is to that. Yeah, that's it's such a great question. It's something I think so many people struggle with because it it can feel like sometimes it's like fashion. You're looking back at stuff you wore 10 years ago and it's almost embarrassing sometimes to be like, did I actually think that was cute? Um, but it's, it's really a couple of things. So it's the common sense approach around um, just looking at it from that lens. Like if you were you know, free to express those thoughts and those feelings and that perspective in a room full of people that you really admire and respect, the same would translate really beautifully online. And you have to also recognize that you're a person that is going to always be ever evolving. And sometimes the beliefs and the perspectives are not going to evolve with you, right? But mm -hmm. trying to keep certain things maybe to different platforms. Like I think about LinkedIn being a platform that's really great for those humanized conversations around work and the learning and everything that you're doing with respect to what you're engaging in in school may not necessarily be the place you wanna start talking about political beliefs, religious beliefs, things like that, that may not necessarily um, apply to that platform. But I mean, I use Twitter for that and it's perfectly accessible by anybody if they want to, to know that. And my podcast as well, I mean, I, I don't really shy away from saying some of the tough things and because mm -hmm. I truly believe that when it comes to conversations like that, if it's not uncomfortable, then we're probably doing it wrong. But it's it's sort of picking the platform that makes most sense for you to be able to use that ability to express and using common sense. I used to always use this example of if you're standing in front of the CEO of a company that you're really excited about working for, what are the things that you would want that person to kind of read and reflect about you? And does it reflect your values? Because at the end of the day, values are going to stay fairly consistent, most likely throughout your life. You don't change that too much and so if it reflects your values as a person you probably won't have that cringe experience I look back at some of the blog posts that I did like six or seven years ago when I started and I'm actually really okay with what I wrote and proud of some of the stuff because it really did align with who I am as a person and that hasn't changed significantly it was never controversial or anything like that so <laughs> yeah I think that also like we're all together everybody we're like growing as a world too so like the things that we talked about mm. six years ago it was like oh my gosh that's such a crazy yeah now that's just so obvious why we talk about it kind of thing so I'm just like mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to talk about it or not but yeah and I think even just asking some friends and family people that you trust Kind mm -hmm. of running it by them it's always good to get a secondary perspective on something if you feel like you know maybe you, it's the first time you're posting something and you just want to get a friend to give you some advice around whether it you know will really hold the test of time that's always a really great way if you have people that you can trust to do that for you yeah that's a good idea thank you mm -hmm, of course I know that we are probably close to time but anybody else have anything else that's a burning question on the top of your mind Okay, Olivia, so um, 
question about navigating privacy of the personal versus professional aspects of online. So there's a focus in my conversation really around authenticity, but where do you draw the line between personal versus professional boundaries? That is a great question. I think that's an ever evolving kind of journey for me as well. Uh, I'm a person where work and personal really blend together. And so that's probably why you hear a lot of conversations on authenticity and all of those pieces. And I think primarily it's because I work in a function and capacity in HR where that's kind of required because I can't leave that element of who I am um, outside of my day-to-day -day work. Otherwise it becomes too um, process oriented and not humanized enough. So I think it really just depends on the type of work that you're looking to do. And at the end of the day, there are some things that are really universal in some of the experiences you might be having. I think about the experiences of navigating through the world um, when I was a grad student and all of the different experiences I had, you know, learning about imposter syndrome for the first time, I'm learning to reframe that now as something that is maybe more of a something that's environmental and not necessarily something that is connected to who I am as a person. But at the time, imposter syndrome was a really common theme that I knew was universal for all of the different grad students um, that I was navigating through the program with. And so if you think about ways in which you can find touch points and content that's really connected to um, things that you feel like might be a little bit more universal. It allows you to infuse some of the personal into the content that you're sharing while also, you know, not necessarily divulging all the different things about who you are as a person out in the world. And with LinkedIn, there are privacy elements on there. You don't have to accept, obviously, everybody that engages and connects with you. I would recommend not doing that. I always also say, if you want to connect with me and I've never connected with you, I always recommend um, people like only accepting invites from people who have actually taken the time to customize their invite. And I would recommend you do the same thing. And you can always share different uh, adjust privacy settings on stuff if you're not comfortable with sort of putting all of that in the world. And so it's just about finding those opportunities to figure out where you want to share what you want to share and how much you want to infuse some of those personal experiences and just thinking about universal themes that might be relevant across the board. And then just also giving yourself a little bit of grace to know that you don't have to share everything, right? And that there is the opportunity to allow yourself to say, that's not gonna be something that I decide to do and being okay with that. And might wanna focus maybe more on the relationships element of things that can, you can go a little bit more personal with people one-on-one -on -one instead of displaying all of that stuff for yourself online. So I hope that's helpful. Okay. And um, like I said here, all of my contact details are uh, here. So like I said, I'm very easy to find. Uh, I have my email address in there as well. If you ever want to engage and connect with me and you're welcome to reach out. I really love, love engaging with students. It's one of my biggest passions and the things that really drives me because the kind of advice that I wish I had um, at this age and stage of my career, I didn't get. And so I, I really am passionate about giving back in a, in a meaningful way. So thank you for the engagement and the great questions and the time. And thank you, David, for opening up the opportunity for me to come back um, and speak to your, your scholars. Thank you, Shazia. What a, what a great presentation. It gets better every time I hear you speak. And um, yeah. we're, we're so fortunate to, uh, to have this opportunity. And I, and I look forward to sharing it with the rest of our network. And um, yeah, wishing you a great week. And uh, keep safe out in Alberta. And uh, we will we'll certainly be in touch with you. Thanks again. Sounds good. Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, everyone. Thank you.